It's not a very nice time for us on this show because something that we've been complaining about uh, has actually just been scientifically proven. A few days ago, I think it started from a week ago or so, a photograph emerged on social media uh, showing the president. I, I don't even know why people will show their own president in that kind of mood, but they showed the president with some lady, something horrendous like that. I mean, people who got their phone calls and they got their phones and called government people, they said that this has never happened. Now, I was surprised when my team checked uh, with the government people, have you seen this photo? And they said, this has never happened. And I said, wow, but if this has never happened, I mean, why do people do that? We talk about this all the time. This politics is politics. It's a game of contest. It's a game of ideas. And that's why we told MPs that instead of fighting, let's do the debate. So it is important that the young people in our country understand that you don't have to go on social media and manufacture photographs for political gain because you'll be found out. And if you are found out, you can be prosecuted. And we want a country of law and order. So we will prosecute people who do that. Whether you do it against MPP or against MPP, uh, against NDC, it should be a no. It, should, it, should, it is too low. That, 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 that bar is too low for us to go to. That because of political gain, because of either political hatred or some motivation that is underpinned by politics, you go and present a photograph of a president with a lady when you know that it is not true. And I'm telling you, as I always say, these people always know that it is not true. They always know. And somehow, they always know that it will come out as... You hear the guy who has now been apologizing for saying that the president's children took the presidential jet at Christmas. I think he should be punished. He should be prosecuted. He should be taken through the law. Eventually, he should be forgiven. But he should be taken through the process of the law. So people will not know that. Yeah, social media is very, very important. Social media has come to stay. Social media is a catalyst. Social media is a check and balance. It's very important. But you cannot abuse it in a way that creates... Uh, an anonymous identity for you, the person writing. People come on social media and say, uh, my name is uh, uh, Coco and Beans, and my name is the, all that kind of thing they do. They come on social media, hide their identity, and then they go after other people. And they say lies, untruth. Now they put a photograph of the president there indicating that the president is in an activity that is untoward. It turns out that it is untrue. Let's look at the details. So the fact check was done. Uh, here it is. The fact check Ghana has verified the photo through critical analysis of the various parts of the viral image and through the assistance of photo forensic software and concludes that the photo has been manipulated in many parts. Let's move on. It says um, cloning errors. To clone is to create a copy in Photoshop, in Photoshop technique. Cloning involves the duplication of parts of an image to create uniform patterns in a photo or to remove blemishes in a photo. In many cases, especially when not done well, cloning leaves traces in a manipulated photo. Okay, so when it's not done well, the cloning will leave its own traces. That's what the experts are saying over here. If they don't do it well, the cloning will leave its own traces. And let's move on and see what's happening. In the said photo, the background is presented as a uniform off-white wall. But the right upper part of the wall, stretching from the right of the artwork hanging on the wall, shows a different color pattern. A thin, irregular ray at the top right shows a white color. The traces of the irregular ray of white color exposes it from being an intentional design but an error that cannot appear in an original photo now these are the analysis of young men and women who have studied technology and are able to now tell us uh, because of the deviant behavior of some people on social media completely animated by politics and i call it wrong and dirty politics that that animates them these people have studied you know and i always say that good will always triumph over evil and we all know that as I told them before, that Hitler will do his worst, but we will do our best. Good will triumph over evil. So good people have studied well and are now telling us how the people with deviant behavior on social media behave. Okay, so let's move on and see how it works. The varying irregular color pattern is further repeated on the bottom right corner of the photo, around the right arm of the lady, the lady in the photo. This time, the off-white color is mixed with another patch of color similar to the color at the back of the lady. So you see how far they go to achieve political ends. This is a difficult job to manipulate this photograph and to create it. But this is how far they go. They go that far to create a, a negative image for a political opponent. 
If you have a political opponent who is in power, who is in office, who is in parliament, look at the work that he has done and criticize the work that he has done. You can look at his speeches and you can point out contradictions. That's the way to play the politics. You can do that. But if you don't do that, or if you don't find that, then you better hold your peace. If you don't want to hold your peace, then pray that he commits an error. You can do that. You can pray that he commits an error. That's up to you. But if he hasn't done that, you, you therefore do not go and sit down and say that, look, let's create something. Let's create a photograph of the president. Let's embarrass him. Let's create something. If you do that and you are caught, the long arm of the law will come after you. And as a society, we don't want that. Tonight, I'll be talking about the first and coup d'etat and show how far we have come as a society uh, so that we don't want some of those things anymore. Why will people go? I'm deliberately not showing the photograph because people have seen it. Why will people go and... and, and manipulate a photograph and publish it on social media and say, hey, Ghanaians, look at your president. Look at what he is doing. When you know it's not true. You know that the president has never been in a photograph like that. You know he's never been. But you will do it. What kind of thing animates them? Is it all political hatred? I don't know that political hatred can go that far. From, from what I learned as a news reporter of many years standing, of running, reporting parliament, where I was reporting opponents, I reported the second parliament. I consider that as a privilege because I keep saying that we have not gotten a parliament like the second parliament of the Fourth Republic. Hopefully we'll get it someday. But that was a very good parliament. I was privileged to report from that parliament. I saw it. And I saw how the political discourse was carried out. And that's why tonight I'll be showing you J.H. Mensah again. I've showed it to you again and again. That was the standard of the parliament of those days. That was political confrontation between the majority and the minority. They confronted each other politically. They didn't do the kind of politics we do today where insults have taken the first paragraph, insults have taken the first, second paragraph, insults have taken the penultimate paragraph, insults have taken the ultimate paragraph. What kind of a people are we? What, what is this political hatred about? Politics is a game of ideas. It's not a game of photoshopping. You photoshop somebody and put it there so that he looks bad. That is crass. It means that you are an empty head. You don't have the brain and the mind to confront the political intellectual hill. Politics is a game of ideas, a competition between economics. What do we do? Do we do top-down approach? Do we do bottom-up approach? What kind of economy should we have? What kind of tax should we have? Should we have e-levy? Should we not have e-levy? We can debate that all the time. And the Ghanaian people will look at the debate and decide that this side is making sense to me, so I will vote for them. Or he says, this side is making sense to me, so I will vote for them. Voting is free. It occurs every four years. Come rain, come shine, come COVID, voting will still occur. So debate the idea. If you don't debate the ideas and you do these kind of silly things, you will go to election and you will be defeated again. Because the Ghanaian people want to hear the facts. The facts of the reason why you don't want e levy. The facts of the reason why you don't want free education. The facts of the reason why you think COVID spending was wrong. Why you think COVID should not have, they shouldn't have spent free water and free electricity on the Ghanaian people. You can debate that and put the document down so the Ghanaian people can remember that when the COVID debate came, I sided with this group. They were making more sense to me. But you don't go and do this Photoshop kind of thing and, and it's terrible. Okay? So they should stop. Let's move on. Still on the cloning. Also, there are traces of different colors at certain portions of the wall in the room. Can you imagine that? There are traces of different colors at certain portions of the wall in the room. These can be seen in the space between the man, which was the president, and the woman, and the extreme right part of the wall. The different colors do not appear to be natural or original, but one created by the cloning errors. So when you clone, there will be errors. When you clone, there will be errors. And the errors of the cloning will be found out. This is just embarrassing, totally disgraceful. Okay, when a photo is modified, it can cause distortions. The distortion often takes the form of pixelation or imperfect coloring. This is a good indicator that a photo has been altered or manipulated. It appears the editor or creator of the photo wants to present the lady in the photo as Evelyn Sewa Brony. Photos of the lady on social media prove that she has tattoos on her back. So, so this, this is the thing. So they sit down and they said, okay, we brought a, a Sewa Brony story. They didn't get anywhere. We are embarrassed. But we'll teach them a lesson. Okay, so they go and create it. And it's just funny, isn't it? 
So they are looking for some lady. I don't know whether they want to equalize something. I'm not sure what they want to do. But yes, they are looking for some lady. So we know her. She has tattoo. Let's put a tattoo there. A Photoshop her into this picture. And then put a president here. And then we'll get him. Is that what politics has become? If you do that, you will never win. You will never, ever win anything if this is how you do your politics. It doesn't work anymore. Before, it used to work. Deception was an important tool of some of the politicians of the beginning of the Fourth Republic. I say that again. Listen, I'm saying it again. Deception was an important part and became a useful tool. For instance, in the 2008 election, deception, running down people, was an important tool in the 2008 election. It's never going to happen again because technology has overtaken deception. Technology has overtaken lies and deception. The law has overtaken lies and deception. You cannot win again with lies and deception. You want to win? Come to the Ghanaian people with ideas. I think what they are doing is wrong. They want to raise seven billion from E-Levy. I think they can raise the seven billion from here. They don't need to bother Ghanaians. Ghanaians will listen. Ghanaians will listen. If you have done their research, you've done their analysis, Ghanaians will listen. Opposition is not just there to say government is wrong. Opposition is there to say what it could have been. That's what oppositions are there for. Please, you, you, you can understand that. For those of us who study political science, it's clear. Opposition is not there to say what is wrong. Opposition is there to say this is what it could have been. So if you can say it well and say it convincingly, in the next election, you will metamorphose from opposition to government. You will metamorphose from defeat into victory. And whoever wins and whoever loses, Ghana's democracy must be the winner for it. And that's why I'm, I'm concerned about things like this. That's not how to win the election. You have to come and tell Ghanaians that I don't like free SHS because if you had elected me, this is what it would have been. That's, that's what people are waiting to. I don't like E-Levy. If you elect me, this is what it would have been. I don't like benchmark uh, tax issues at the harbor. If you had elected me, this is what it would have been. And then you talk about real policies. You share real policies with the Ghanaian, with real data. And most likely, reasonable people will understand it. Okay. More on pixelation. One of the tattoos is located at the mid-upper part of her back and looks like a cross pendant. There is another tattoo on the right, which is indiscernible to the fact check Ghana. It appears the cross-like tattoo at the back of the lady in the viral photo has been fixed there, making the photo pixelated. Also, it appears the editor attempted to fix another photo on the right part of the back, closer to the arm, to represent another tattoo, but there wasn't enough space, leaving the portion pixelated. As a result, the edges of the right shoulder of the lady are jacked instead of blending, blending in with the background of the photo as seen on the left side of the shoulder. Akufuado is noted to wear his wedding band in almost all public appearances. In the viral photo, the image that's presented as the president appears to have the wedding band on, but that part of the photo is very pixelated. The pixelation can also be seen in the area beneath the chin and around the neck. These suggest that parts of the photo have been modified. Lights. Objects within one frame of a photo will often have the same amount of light, especially when they are very close like the man and the woman in the viral photo. However, a closer look at the photo suggests that the light surrounding the man is slightly different from what is in the room. The light around the man is slightly dimmer than what appears to be the off-white color of the room. Again, the light surrounding the man in the photo appears rectangularly shaped. This indicates that the photo of the man may have been cut out from somewhere and fixed in the photo to create the impression that both the man and the woman were in the same room together. Hallelujah be to the resurrected Lord. Have you, have you seen it? Have you seen what the scientists, the experts are telling us? They are telling us they are exposing everything that the criminals did. Yeah, they are criminals. What else are you going to call them? They are criminals. They are exposing what everything the criminals did. They tried to create, so they took the man's photo, the president's photo from somewhere, and dump it in. And had a lady's photo from somewhere and dump it in. And let's try and create the impression that they were in the same room. And then they were about to do something because they are half naked. And some some awkward thing like that. 
When you see the photograph, the first thing you ask yourself is, who took this photograph? That's the first thing you ask yourself. From which angle, from the angle the photograph was taken, it must have been somebody standing right there who took the photograph. That, that's the question you ask yourself. And then immediately you see that this is not possible. It's not even, it's not just that it's not possible. It's actually not plausible. But you see, they do these things. I don't know why, I don't know who teaches them. I don't know why they do that because it's something that they can't succeed at. You cannot use this to build something substantial to transition from opposition to government or to transition from a bad policymaker to a good policymaker. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. You know, and I don't know why they have confidence in that. I think they have not noticed that uh, lies and deceit is gone. It's not going to be part of Ghana's election anymore. Fact Check Ghana also ran the viral photo in the fake news detector software by technology company Invid We Verify. According to the, the Ponta Institute, headquarters of the International Fact Checking Network, the Invid We Verify verification plug-in, quote, is one of the most powerful tools for spotting misinformation online. The software helps generate forensics and data on photos and videos. It analyzes them in it analyzes them to highlight distortions, forgery, and manipulations. Very impressive development in the world. The fake news detector found many such distortions in the photo that supports the aforementioned manipulations. The team checked for compression of the photo and cloning on the software. And the compression, the software highlighted distortions in the ghost and grade, that is something technical, of the viral photo. On cloning, the software identified a copy move, forgery, detection uh, issues. Okay. The reports below indicate how the software explanations, ex how the software explains the various items it looked out for and the corresponding images it produced. Now, this is, this is particularly interesting, isn't it? So, the, it's, a, it's a fake product. Now, what I'm hoping for, what I'm really hoping for is that these, uh, uh, I, I like to call them internet police, these internet police with their technology will be able to find out the first person that put this out on internet and grab him or her. They have to catch him or her. And I'm hoping they can find, I'm hoping that with all this technology, they can also see that, oh, it was Paul Adamachi who first put it on his Facebook page. And I get a call, hey, Mr. Adamachi, you put a photograph of the CID want to see you. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm looking for, that they can drill it down and show that this one was the first person who posted it. He posted it to this platform. Out of this platform, this person shared it here, that person. So that next time when we see these kinds of videos, which is not content, which is not fact, which is not analysis, we don't hurriedly share them all over the place. Because if you do, you'll be found out. And that's what has happened here. They have been so exposed that I'm hoping that they've been found. In the conclusion, so that I end, it says, from the evidence presented from both critical physical analysis of the viral photo and the forensic analysis, the photo has been altered in many areas. The manipulations, therefore, cast immense doubt on the veracity of the photo. The manipulations, therefore, cast immense doubt on the veracity of the photo. The manipulations, therefore, if you have a photo, do you have to manipulate it? If you have any photo, you don't manipulate it. Tonight, we're going to put pictures of uh, Good Evening Ghana. So we're not going to manipulate anything. It's the photographs we took from here. That's what we put out. We don't manipulate anything. And I go to the stadium to watch a game. I take photographs. I share with my social media people. We don't manipulate anything. If you have a photo and you need to manipulate it, then it is fraudulent. And if, in fact, if you, the person posting, is not part of that photo, Neither are you part of that story. And you are doing it about a politician, whether it's NDC or MPP, whatever politician, high-profile politician, just so that you can score political points. It moves from manipulation into a crime. It is also witchcraft, but that's okay. But it is a crime under the law. And the law must deal with you. The Communication Services Act has clauses in there that can deal with these kind of things and they have to be dealing with it. We have to be dealing with it because we want to build a society for the next generation of Ghanaians who can come in and do the political confrontation with each other. The American political parties, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party have been confronting each other for 100 years and they are still doing it. That's the way to build a society. Not the coup d'etat that Abouaji is talking about that we are going to deal with. The way to build a society is the democracy. The rules, the laws must work. People will flout it. Yes, they must be dealt with. Political parties will win elections. Political parties will lose elections. But let us set the standard that for political parties to win elections, they have to show 
that they have an alternative. And that alternative is a better alternative, and it is that which could have been. That alternative is that which could have been. Why? When Aku Fado contested elections in opposition, he said that if I become president, I'll give you free SHS. I don't see why John Mahama cannot do free SHS. He says there's no money. There is money. We'll do it. That's what he said. So the Ghanaian people looked at it and said, ah, so what could have been is that I could have gone to Presec without paying school fees. Is that truly what it could have been? Then I'll vote for this man and see if that which could have been would actually become. So when that opposition person comes into government, his denominator for assessing him is that you told us that which could have been in this policy, that policy, this policy. You mentioned it. Now you are here. What could have been? Has it become? If it hasn't become, I have issues with you. If it has become, then I praise you. If I become, but the opposition leader is telling me that, oh, yes, I didn't do free SHS. He did it. But let me tell you, if you let me into power, this is what it could have been. On top of your free SHS, this is what it could have been. No wonder in the 2020 election, the NDC people were talking about free university education. That's the point they were making. They were trying to tell you that this is what it could have been. Now you have free SHS. If you have me in there, you have free SHS, you have free potential education as well. That's what the NDC were saying. That's what they told the Okada people. That, look, your Okada people, they are chasing you around. No, forget about them. If you elect me, I will regularize Okada so you can. That's a policy. That's not insults. That's a policy. It's then up to the Ghanaian people to make a determination that I like this policy. I'm an Okada rider. My brother is an Okada rider. My sister is an Okada rider. I like this policy. So I'm going to vote for that which could have been. If you can't get a lot of Ghanaians, majority of Ghanaians, to think and agree with you on that which could have been, then you will go to elections and you will be defeated by half a million people. But that's democracy. You come again the next time you tell the people this is what it could have been. So president says, I'm spending a lot of money on COVID. The other day, Charles Edubwine told us, I'm spending $25 billion on COVID. It's going to increase my debt to GDP ratio. Opposition comes and says, don't mind him. He didn't spend that money on COVID. If I were the president, this is what I would do with COVID. My members of parliament tell me that this is a document from Ministry of Finance. If we were in power, we would treat it this way. This is that which could have been. So, Ghanaians will look at it and decide, oh no, I like the that which could have been. If you find majority of people liking the that which could have been, they will elect you in office. But this kind of crass behavior, this kind of witchcraft criminal behavior, it must be eschewed from our society forever and ever. Those days where you run elections by telling lies on people, where they run elections in this country and they, 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 they presented the gamut of lies. He's this, he's that, he's that, he's this, he's that. And they won elections by the skin of their teeth because of lies, it is gone. I'm sure those who ran elections in 2020, those who were part of the engine room of both political parties, by now know that elections is not run on lies in Ghana anymore. It's never going to happen anymore. This is the end of our story. Those who are doing this, please be warned. We don't want deviant behavior on social media. We want to keep social media working. We want to keep social media active. People must write what they want on social media, but let's limit it to the debate, the confrontation, and the context based on facts and figures. Our story is over. This Ghana will be defined by integrity, sovereignty, a common ethos, discipline, and shared values. It is one where we aim to be masters of our own destiny, where we mobilize our own resources for the future, breaking the shackles of the Gunnersburg colonial economy and the mindset of dependency, bailouts, and extraction. It is a Ghana beyond aid. Mr. Speaker, thank you, and may God bless our homeland Ghana and make her great and strong.